myself Dr. Jay Glory, Associate Professor of Physics, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. Today, I am going to tell about the chemical vapor deposition technique which is in a fabrication of nanomaterials. So, in chemical vapor deposition technique, so it is a chemical process used to produce high purity, high performance solid materials. So, the chemical vapor deposition technique is uh, uh, used to produce high purity, high performance uh, solid materials. So, in this process, so this process is often used in the semiconductor industries to produce uh, thin films. So, used in the semiconductor industry to produce thin films. So, chemical vapor deposition technique for synthesizing materials in which chemical components in vapor phase react to form a solid film at some surface that is uh, so on the substrate. So, chemical vapor deposition is a technique for synthesizing the nanomaterials for synthesizing the materials in which chemical component in vapor phase. So, vapor phase of uh, uh, that uh, chemical uh, components in vapor phase react and it forms a solid film on the substrate. So, in this method, uh, nanoparticles are deposited from gas phase. So, materials is heated to form a gas and then it is allowed to deposit on a solid surface under high vacuum. So, that in this method, nanoparticles are deposited from gas phase. So, we have to make gas phase. So, from that, uh, this gas phase. From the gas phase, the nanoparticles are produced. So, in this method, nanoparticles are deposited from the gas phase. So, material is heated. material is heated so that it uh, converts into gas phase and then it allowed to deposit on the solid surface and a high vacuum. So, in deposition by chemical reaction, new products are formed. Nano powders of oxide and carbides of metals can be formed if Vapors of carbon or oxygen are present with the material. If uh, in the material, if there is a uh, uh, carbon or oxygen are present in that uh, uh, metal, then uh, in the nanopowders which we got after the chemical reaction, the nanopowder consists of uh, oxides and carbides of metals. That's why nanopowders of oxides and carbides of metals can be formed if vapors of carbon or oxygen are present with the metal. It involves a metal organic precursor. It is introduced into the hot zone of the reactor using mass flow control. So, the precursor is vaporized either by resistive or inductive heating. The hot carrier gas such as argon or neon carries the hot atoms to the reaction chamber. So, here in this diagram, we are allowing some gases So, we are allowing some gases into the vacuum chamber. This is the vacuum chamber. It is the vacuum chamber. So, here there is a, in this vacuum chamber, there is a substrate. There is a substrate. So, this is heating with the coil. Heating with coil. So, when material is 
heated at high temperature it convert into gas phase that would be allowed to fall on the substrate that will be deposited on the substrate so after that of uh, uh, depositing on the substrate because of the surface reactions the bright product uh, the by product will be comes out uh, from the gas out so the hard atoms so here what we have seen so metal organic precursor is introduced into hard zone of the reactor using mass flow controller precursor is vaporized either by residue the precursor is vaporized either by residue or inductive heating the hot carrier gas argon neon like uh, they carries the hot atoms to the reaction chamber so the hot atoms collide with uh, the cold atoms and undergo some condensation through the nucleation and form some small clusters so inside a reaction uh, the other reactants are added to the control in the reaction rate so then clusters are allowed to condense on a moving belt arrangement with scrapper to collect the nanoparticles here the particle size could be controlled by rate of evaporation rate of cluster formation and rate of condensation so in this diagram so the solid material is heated through the inductive of or resistive heating so here the solid material is heated with inductive or resistive heating so that vapor is formed vapors are formed so to this vapors we are adding some carrier gas so the carrier gas may be argon or neon argon or neon so this when we are adding this carrier gas so it allow to so this carrier gas is mixed with uh, vapors and then it is allowed to another chamber that is uh, reaction chamber so in this reaction chamber there is uh, other reactants are added other reactants are added so that uh, when it is uh, cooled when it is uh, cooled through the condensation we may get some clusters after the reactions we may get some clusters formation of clusters then that would be allowed to collect on the rotating one which is a scrap so here we are getting a particle collection particle collection so that firstly metal organic precursors are introduced into the hard zone of the reactor and then these precursors are vaporized by heating then we added some carrier gas so the hot atoms or allowed to the reaction chamber then these hot atoms collide with the cold atoms and undergo condensation through the nucleation and form small small clusters so here it is forming small small clusters so inside reaction chamber other reactants are also added uh, because uh, to control the reaction rate so this reactant gas is added to control the reaction rate so the formed clusters are allowed to condense on a moving belt arrangement with scrapper to collect the nanoparticles so here uh, uh, there is a scrapper which is a moving belt so on this 
the condensed particles are deposited so that we can collect here the particles so particles are collected here so that uh, when heating the uh, precursors through the uh, inductive or resistive heating so vapors are formed so to this vapors carrier gas or argon or neon is allowed to enter into the chamber so this a uh, hot vapor state that is a vapor state so this uh, uh, vapor state is mixed with the carrier gas so what happens here so this is the substrate substrate so here uh, the gas is flowing so gas in here gas out so so this is the gas flow flow of gas so here we are adding some carrier gas we are adding some carrier gas that is a mixed gas we are allowing that is carrier gas plus reactive gas carrier gas and reactive gas so when this mixed gas is allowed to the chamber so it would be condensed and uh, redeposited on the substrate so this carrier gas is used to carry the reactive gas to place on the substrate so it brings the reactive gas at dumps to place on the substrate so the mixed gas that is uh, carrier gas and then reactive gas this carrier gas may be argon or neon so when this mixed gas is allowed to the chamber so this carrier gas condensed this gas condensed and deposited on the substrate so so here this carrier gas is used to carry the reactive gas to place on the substrate so when it placed on the substrate so this is the carrier gas that is this is the reactive gas and this one is carrier gas so the mixed gas is allowed to the chamber so that when it is condensed from vapor to condensed form so then it allowed to fall on the substrate to make a thin film so that when the condensed particles are <coughs> placed or deposited on the substrate because of absorption or uh, uh, surface reaction some by product may come out that would be comes out from the gas out so like that uh, that uh, thin films can be produced by this chemical vapor deposition techniques so that's why we are heating this solid precursors through the inductive or resistive heating and then it is added uh, the carrier gas so that when it is added the carrier gas to the hot zone what happens it allowed to the uh, other reaction chamber so here uh, in this chamber the hot atoms collides with the cold atom so that it uh, uh, form as a uh, clusters condensed and form as a clusters so that uh, here the formation the so uh, it can be controlled the reaction can be controlled through by adding the some other uh, reactive uh, 
uh, gases that is other reactants so this uh, clusters after uh, condensation it would be deposited on the moving belt and collected particles in this one so that's why the in this way we can get the nano particles so the advantages of cvd technique the chemical vapor deposition method of synthesis has many advantages so the increased yield of nanoparticles a wider range of uh, ceramic including nitrates and carbides can be synthesized more complex oxide such as barium titanate or composite structure can be formed chemical vapor deposition has the ability to create ultra thin layers of materials this uh, this make it uh, ideal for uh, applications such as production of uh, electrical circuits that require thin layers thermal stability cvd maintains its uh, uh, results even when exposed to extreme temperatures or extreme temperature variations so high cost of equipment and uh, metal precursors that is uh, it requires uh, specialized equipments so vacuum chambers glass flow controllers and high temperature furnaces it it, uh, it needs so these systems are uh, expensive to purchase and maintain so this method needs expensive autoclaves and uh, the impossibility of uh, observing the crystal as it grows so when the crystal is growing we couldn't able to absorb the growth of the crystal so in cvd process it can have a relatively slow deposition rates compared to the other techniques such as physical vapor deposition technique so in this the disadvantages of this uh, cvd technique cvd technique controlling the growth of particle is difficult stopping the newly formed particles from agglomeration is also difficult so the references are uh, engineering physics by k tyagarajan mcgill uh, education private limited new delhi a textbook of uh, engineering physics by m n avathanlu pg shree sagar s chand and company new delhi uh, engineering physics by dr m r muga anuradha publications chennai engineering physics by p k parani swami fourth edition scitech publications private limited chennai engineering physics by dr k thyaga uh, sorry engineering physics uh, by dr k vijay kumar s chand and uh, company new delhi thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates